Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit and Matthew's translation of the Greek adjective Ionius. Something that recently caught my attention is that we have two accounts of Jesus' saying regarding the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, one from Mark's Gospel and the other from Matthew's Gospel. And these passages are commonly used as a proof text that, at least for some things, God never forgives people and therefore you're a goner forever. The problem is, these passages actually don't teach that. And so let's compare these two passages from ESV, a highly trusted and popular translation. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. Mark 3.29 ESV And whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, either in this age or in the age to come. Matthew 12.32 ESV now, my first observation is that ESV is injecting the word never into the text of Mark's gospel, but not in Matthew's gospel, and it's the same word, which significantly changes the meaning of this passage. There's a big difference between not being forgiven and therefore punished and never being forgiven, meaning God holds a grudge against you forever. Now, to be fair, the etymology of our word never is not ever at no time which when used in the King James Bible 600 years ago, simply meant you will not be forgiven here, there, or anywhere. Simply this, if you do this, you will be punished. Not that God will hold a grudge against you forever. And overall, I really do like ESV, so I'm not picking on them. I'm just pointing out that even the best translators can miss the actual point of the original text. So it's up to us as Christians to study these passages more closely, and we certainly do have the resources, so we have no excuse. Now, this word is used in the New Testament thousands of times, and it is almost always translated as not or no, and all the older lexicons say exactly the same. Now, the reason I'm highlighting this with a popular commercial Bible translation is because even there we can see how Matthew translated the Greek adjective Ionius in this passage, because he most certainly had a copy of Mark's gospel when composing his account, and Mark uses the adjective Ionius. But Matthew spells it out as in the age to come, meaning it is of the age to come, which is exactly what we see in the Nicene Constantinople Creed. We believe in the life of the age to come. That's how they understood the adjective Ionius. They didn't see it as eternal as an in infinity. They were always looking forward to the age to come, one step at a time. But don't take my word for it. If you want to see these passages more literal to the Greek text, here they are from Young's literal translation. God bless you and thank you for listening.